Well, hello everyone, and welcome to my little tutorial today. Uh, today we'll be taking a look at how I do acoustic room correction, or digital room correction, using Room EQ Wizard, or REW, and Reface. Now this isn't true room correction, it's only an approximation, or an emulation, of true room correction. And the only reason I say that is because neither of these applications were actually designed to do what I'm about to do with them but we do get some pretty stellar results. So let me start off by saying that I have already recorded my measurements here. I'll just walk you through them really quickly. I've gone ahead and color coded them according to which speaker they are from. So here are my red ones you can see are the left speaker and my blue ones here are the right speaker. So I've gone ahead and recorded several measurements from each side. I have my main listening position here. Uh, this one is where my head is right now at this very moment while I'm sitting here talking to you. Uh, this is the right channel and this one here corresponds to the left channel. So these were both recorded with the microphone in the same spot and I just did a left and a right. Then what I did was I moved the microphone forward about maybe five or six inches and I did a second measurement from the left channel here. And then I did the same thing from the right channel here. So the next thing I did was a third measurement position, which I named back. And this is about a foot behind front. So front being five or six inches in front of main, back is five or six inches behind the main position. So I did the same thing to the left of the main position. This was probably about six or seven inches to the left. And this was six or seven inches to the right of the main position. So we have sort of a uh, cross shape, right? So my main position, let's just say, for example, my main position is here. The front position is here. The back position is here. The left position was over here. The right position was over here. Okay, and this is looking from the top down. So I have main, front, left, back, right. Okay, now if we turn the model on its side, I took a top and a bottom position. So if this is level now, and I'm facing this direction, this would be front over here, this would be back, this would be top, and down here would be the bottom. So I have this three-dimensional cross pattern from which I took the measurements, right? And I did that with both speakers from each position before I moved it on to the next one. So here I have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight positions. Now what I could have done, and you don't have to do this, but what you could do is you could take two measurements from the main position, which would give it slightly more weight when we go to average them together. As it stands now, they all get equal equal weight in the average. But if you want to give a little bit more priority to the main listening position, that is definitely not a bad idea. And all I would have had to do was record a second measurement from my main listening position. And I would see that here if I had done it, but I didn't do it, but it's okay. For the sake of the tutorial here, uh, we'll just go ahead and use what I have. All right, so the first thing I do is I have to go over to controls and I have to align the impulse response start time. So I go ahead and I click this button. You can see down here that it's, it's working. So it's going through and aligning all of the impulse response start times. And we can actually see that by going to impulse and then I will, let's see, I have the step response. Okay, so you can see the step response here and that it is aligned to zero and it should be that way for every one of the measurements. If you want to see them all at the same time, you can go to overlays, impulse, um, make sure that all of the impulse responses are lined up. And uh, another thing we can do is we can look at the step response and I'm using my right mouse button to move this around. 
and I can use my positive and negative over here to zoom in and out. But again, what I'm looking for is that all of my impulses start pretty much at zero. So wherever the, the pulse starts, that's where it's aligned to. So we can see them all lined up now. And the colors uh, correspond to my left and right channels. So I have the red ones, uh, that's my left, and the blue ones, uh, that's my right. So as we can see, the step response is a bit of a mess. We don't have any real cohesion going on here. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail about how to read this. Suffice to say that we should see both the left and right channels exhibiting the same behavior, and we will see that later as we're generating the filter. But for now, obviously, they don't line up pretty well. And that equates to a smeared stereo image, basically, if that's the way you want to look at it. All right, so going back, I'm going to close out of the overlays window. I'm going to go back to the all SPL window where I can see all of my measurements at the same time. Okay, so they've been aligned to their IR start times. And now what I'm going to do is deselect all of the right speaker measurements. Make sure I get them all. So we can see that I have all of the left speaker measurements selected and the right ones are not selected. All right, so what I can do now is I can come up here. I'm going to choose the psychoacoustic model and I'm going to apply smoothing to my left speaker measurements. I could do this all at the same time, but in order to keep things compartmentalized, I'm just going to do one channel at a time and then I'll go back and I'll do the right channel. So I have all of my left speaker measurements now smoothed using the psychoacoustic model. And the next step is to generate a decibel average. So I create my decibel average. And I can come over here and I can rename this magnitude left, because technically speaking, this is the average uh, response of the left speaker. All right, so if I hide all of these and I keep that one selected, this here is the average response of my left channel. Okay, so now what I want to do is deselect this, make sure that all of my left speaker measurements are selected again. So this is basically how it was in the beginning. I just have my left speaker measurements selected. I'm going to come back in here and create a vector average, right? So hit this button. It's going to give me a second measurement, which I can just rename vector L. So now I have a magnitude L and a vector L. I'm going to go ahead and change this color to a red also, just so I can keep things organized. Just by glancing over here, I can tell what's left and what's right, as long as I keep my colors coordinated. All right, that takes care of the left channel. Now what I'll do is I will select all of my left channel measurements. This is pretty easy to do. Right click here, toggle selections, okay? This selects all of my right speaker measurements and all of my left speaker measurements are now deselected and I did it in one click, pretty easy. So now I'm just going to repeat the process. Let's go ahead and apply psychoacoustic smoothing to my right speaker measurements. And then I will create a decibel average of the right speaker measurements. Rename this. Magnitude R for right. Change the color, give it blue. And now I have a magnitude R measurement down here. Okay, and this is my average. So in order to create the vector average, I have to deselect this. I can't have the magnitude average selected when I create the vector. I have to have only the original recording, recorded measurements. So now I create vector average. We'll see it down here as vector average. And all I have to do is change this to an R. And um, let's keep it in the same color scheme, so it's blue. 
And now I have magnitude left, vector left. I have magnitude right, and I have vector right. So what I can do is clear my selections here. Now I'm looking at my two magnitudes and my two vectors. Okay, let me get this out of the way for a minute. One of the interesting things about this that you'll notice is that if I only look at the, the uh, right speaker here, the vector and the magnitude average don't necessarily line up. That's not a bad thing. It's really too hard to explain why it's different. Uh, but I just want you to notice that they don't line up. So if you're wondering if yours aren't lining up, if you're wondering if there's anything wrong with that, don't worry about it. It's totally fine. Okay, so I'm just going to be working with the averages. Technically, I don't need these original measurements anymore. Uh, I can leave them there if I want to. In this case, I'm going to leave them there because I may go back and change things. Um, I always want to have these here. It's kind of like a, like a film negative that I can keep producing different measurements from. All right, so my next step is to organize this a little bit better. I'm just going to drag magnitude r up there. So I have my magnitude measurements and my vector measurements together. All right, now the first thing I want to do is come over here to magnitude, click on SPL and phase, open controls, and there's a button here called generate minimum phase. I want to click this button. Now, I used a uh, cal file for my microphone. If you don't have a cal file for your microphone, just do this, uncheck it. Okay, but since I used uh, UMic1 and I have a calibration file, I'm going to leave that checked. Generate and close here. Go to magnitude R and repeat. So generate minimum phase, generate and close. These are ready to go. And now my vector, what I need to do here Go back to all SPL, open up measurement actions. A little panel opens up here that I can perform different functions with. Uh, I take the vector average and I generate a minimum phase version of the vector average. So make men phase copy. Now I have vector left MP. And uh, again, I'm going to make this sort of a reddish pinkish color. Keep it in the same world over there. And um, I'm going to repeat this process for vector r. So now I will have a min phase copy of vector r. Okay, and I'm again just going to keep this blue. All right. So now I have the original vector measurements, which I don't really need anymore. I can go ahead and delete these. Uh, you can save them if you want to do some experimenting, but I'm going to remove them just to make the uh, tutorial a little bit more clear. All right, so I've eliminated the original averages and I am now left with the minimum phase copies of those averages.